Building a fence is the easiest way to give your property some extra safety, security and privacy from the road or from your neighbours. Everyone will see it too, so it's a good reason to make sure it's built well and looks good. The fence we're building here is a simple post rail and paling fence. Follow these instructions and with a good plan, you'll be able to do it yourself. Now, there's a few things you need to be aware of before you get into it. Firstly, you can build a fence up to 2.5 metres high without a building permit, but it's always best to check with your council before starting. And if you're building on a boundary line, you're best to talk to your neighbour about what sort of fence you're building, its costs and your start time. Also, download a copy of the Fencing Act to make sure you're in the know. Next, you'll need to establish your boundary. If you can't find your boundary pegs, get a copy of your plans from the council or get a surveyor in to help you out. Also, it's important to check your council plans to see where all your pipes are located. You certainly don't want to hit any of those. And also, you'll need to call your electricity provider for info on underground wires because these may not be shown on your plans. Okay, so now it's time to decide what your fence is going to look like and what materials you're going to use to build it. In our situation, we're just going to match the existing fence with a rough sawn post, 4x2 rails and rough sawn fence palings. You can also get dressed or glue laminate posts and a variety of paint finished palings in different sizes. So now you can measure up, draw yourself a plan and get your materials ordered a few days before you start the job. Okay, the site's been cleared, so I've got a nice clean canvas to work with. The first thing I have to do is establish exactly where my boundary is so I can put up my string line. Okay, I've got my string line up. Now, not only does this represent exactly where my boundary line is, it also represents the center of my post holes. Normally when I build a fence, I put my posts at no more than two meters apart. You can go up to 2.4. In this situation, I've measured out and two metres is exactly where the existing fence was and I can see there's still concrete in the hole. I don't want to dig all that concrete out so what I'm going to do is actually space my posts a little bit closer together. At the moment I've got five posts, I'm going to put one extra post in so that's going to give me six posts which will mean I can get away from all that existing concrete. Using my tape measure and dazzle I'll measure and mark the centre of each post along the boundary line. Then I'm ready to dig my holes which need to be a minimum of 250 millimetres in diameter and 600 millimetres deep. You can use a spade to dig them by hand, but I've hired a post hole borer to make the job nice and easy. So I measure and mark the required depth on the auger so I know when to stop. I'm using a two-person post hole borer, so I've got a maiden to help. And make sure to clean the hole out before you drop your posts in. Okay, all my post holes are dug, they're looking great. I'm just about ready to throw my posts in, ready for concrete. Now, I've moved our string line, which was the centre of our post holes, I've moved that over 100 millimetres. I got to 100 because our post is 100 mil thick, so I'm coming half that, which is 50, and I'm just going to keep our string line 50 millimetres off our post. The reason for that is, most of the time these rough sawn posts have a few dags on them and that could affect our string line if the string line was to be hard up against it. I've also put a string line at the top that's 100 millimetres away from our centre as well. Now I've got two different fence heights. I've got one here that I'm starting from and one down the other end that's 200 millimetres higher. So I've set the string line up using my laser to shoot a nice straight line and I'll keep my posts full length then cut them to height down the track. Now I'm just about ready to put my posts in. I've got a bit of concrete in the bottom for my post to sit on because we don't want our posts touching the ground. Now I've also got myself an offcut of 4 by 2 here which is 50 mil thick so I'm going to use that in between the post and the string line just to use as a rule. And I've also got a couple of braces here with screws already in the end ready for me to screw into my pegs that I've already plonked in the ground. Because I'm working on my own, I just have to get myself set up to make it easy. So what I'm going to do, put my brace up against my peg and just got to make sure that I'm 50 mil away, which is the thickness of our block. That's pretty good down there. And that's about five mil away, so it says I just need to Tweak that bottom over a tad and we'll come back and check that. Okay, so that's looking good. So what we'll do is put a screw in our brace 
and we'll put one down here. So I'm just going to pick up my brace and put that on the other side of the peg. I'll do a quick check for plumb and secure the second brace at the top and the bottom. Okay, that's looking great. So what I'm going to do now is set up my next post, use the same peg, come back onto that. Process is exactly the same. And that's all my posts braced, ready for concrete. I've mixed up all my concrete as per the instructions on the back of my bag. All I have to do, plonk that in the hole, about 100 millimetres from the top, work out any bubbles and let it set for 24 hours. Okay, it's been 24 hours, the concrete's nice and set, the posts are looking good. Next thing I have to do is take our braces off. Rightio, so I'm just about ready to start marking out my fence post for where my rails are situated. I'm just going to match in with my existing fence here. We're 50 millimetres down from my string line here, which indicates the top of my paling. Now, normally you could go a maximum of 150 millimetres from your top of your rail to the top of your paling. So we're just going to copy in here what's here, 50 mil down, so we're going to keep that line all the way through. So on my first new post, I'll mark 50 millimetres down from the string line, do the same on my last post, and then run a chalk line between the two, indicating the top of my first set of rails. And to match the existing, I'll do the same for the middle rails. Now for my bottom rail, ultimately I'd like to match up with what's existing, but I can't do that because my ground level here is slightly higher than over there. So what I'm going to do is just take our ground level and come up 50 millimetres, and that measurement there will be the bottom of our rail. If I wasn't working in with an existing fence, I would mark the top of my top rail 150 millimetres down from the top of the fence, the bottom of my bottom rail 150 millimetres up from the ground, and then split the difference for the middle rail. So that's the bottom of my bottom rail marked on all my posts. Now there's a couple of different ways we can fix our fence rails. One is to the face like that, spanning over three posts. Or what we're going to do is take our fence rails and fix it in between our posts. Now when you start measuring out for your rails in between the posts, take the measurement at the bottom and use that for all three rails. I've already squared my mark around. I've got a nail sitting on there that's going to help me out. So I'll just sit that in there nice and flush with the front. Now, you could use four inch nails or 90 mil galvanized nails to fix that to the post. What I like to use are these 100 mil galvanized bugle screws. Reason for that is, it's going to reduce any twisting or warping of our posts and our rails and it's just going to hold everything together nice and strong. Now if you are working in a high wind zone I'd recommend you use something like a 100mm by 10mm coach screw, that'll fix it in nice and strong as well. And it's best practice to use three screws per rail on each end. For our top rail what I will use is my strop to make sure I tight those two posts in really nice and tight. My fence rails are up, they're looking fantastic. Now when we put our palings to our rails, we want to keep them off the ground about 20 odd mil. So I've just laid a board down there and we're just going to drop our paling on top of that. Now I've left my line on here, that's always been our level line, and our boards are going to stick above it because we're not staying to this height, we're staying to our height on the other end of the fence which is 200 millimetres down. So I'm going to use the string line to get a nice straight line later and then come back cut those off and then cut our posts off. Because I'm using a 25 millimetre thick fencing paling, I'm going to use my 65 mil galvanised fencing nail to fix these. And I'm going to be using my nail gun to, to apply the nail through. Now obviously you can use a hammer and a nail to do this. A couple more little tips before you crack into it. When we put our boards up, we're going to use our hammer and chisel, get it nice and tight, because nine times out of ten, these boards have got a lot of moisture in them. When the sun hits them and dries them out, more than likely you'll get a little gap. So we'll try and avoid that. And then fix them with two nails per paling on each rail. And about every six or seven boards, we're going to throw our trusty level on there just to make sure we're staying plumb the whole way. 
Another wee tip is to use a spirit level to give yourself a straight line for your nails to follow. A few rails from the end measure the remaining space as you may very well need to rip your final paling down to fit. Simply measure and mark each end, rule a line along and cut it down using your circular saw. Then fix it in place and that's all our paling's on. I've flicked a chalk line on the wall here for me to cut the top of my palings off. Now I'm just going to use my trusty circular saw to do that. It's going to set that just the depth of the palings. And you could put a board underneath here if you don't trust yourself with a nice straight free hand. But however, I'm just going to free hand that and give myself a nice straight line. Then finally cut the posts off at an angle so the water runs off. So there's our new fence. Just stick to the plan and it'll be easy as. Make sure you subscribe to the Mitre 10 YouTube channel for more great content or click here to watch more now.